I think me and Lee should do like a little musical collaboration. Please could you stop the noise, I'm trying to get some rest. From all the unborn checkered electrician's problems in my head. Welcome back to Plumber Parts. We are here today at Lee's house yet again. It's a bit somber here today. His lizard is no longer with us. So if you might remember, if you watched the video a couple of weeks ago, there was a lizard crawling about, and I'm afraid he's now no longer with us. I mean, is he actually genuinely upset about it? Lee, are you upset about the lizard? We'll have no chat about the lizard in here, mate. He says no chat about the lizard. <laughs> I think we'll make him a little cross out of copper or something. So in today's Plumber Parts video, we're going to do something that I've never actually tried before, but if it does work, I think it's going to help you out quite a lot because we're going to pressurise Lee's hot water system. He's got a four tick tank, which means it doesn't have a lot of water to feed that pump. And if the pump pushes out too much water and runs dry, it's gonna ruin the pump. So we're going to fit a special float switch designed just for this type of installation to cut the electrical supply to the pump if the water level gets too low in the tank. This is gonna be a game changing video. I think you should watch it. And also I just found out last week that only 16% of our views come from notifications. So click the bell. And if you haven't clicked the subscribe yet, then just stop watching now and do one. I don't want you to be part of this channel. So click subscribe. You can't have it for free anymore. You people. Let's get on with it anyway. Hold tight. Do you ever want to see the canine version of an annoying customer? Well, here it is. It's called Lockie. Look at it. Oh, come around, do my job. Come and do my bathroom. I'll jump up and bite you. No, I'm not gonna pay the invoice. Rah, rah, rah. Oh my God, oh my God, what's out here? What's out here? You stupid dog. I don't usually whisper in videos, but you're about to see something that most people don't ever see. He was reading the instructions a minute ago. Not only was an electrician reading the instructions, but even more amazing, a bloke was. <laughs> <laughs> Lee's here. Lee's actually got to do a oh, little bit. Oh, it's upside down. Yeah, so you're reading the Arabic, mate. What's oh. that all about? Now go to the English. Oh, see, okay. you'll, it says, you'll understand that now. It says <laughs> wiring to be done by a oh. competent person, so I guess that's why you've got to be you, mate. It. It's the artisan way. I thought you was going to do get it. Get on, bro. I wanted to see some plumber <laughs> wiring. <laughs> Hold on, let me put my phone on silent. Let's do a plenty of español ahora, sí. Continuar, it's muy difícil. So Lee's also attempted to do some tiling today. As you know, I love doing tiling. Uh, well, hang on, oh, attempted? No. Well, I haven't uh, looked at it yet. Oh, but I do like the problem. fact, so look, let's just have a quick look at Lee's tiling before we get on with this job. So I do like the fact that he's laid down separation layer here and he's actually glued it down properly. That glue is a nightmare, isn't it? When <laughs> yeah. you get it out and comb it out, it's like, right, this is, there's no going back. I don't want to sit though. Nice job, mate. Done the old back butter. Yeah, you back butter the tiles yeah. as well? Oh, he's good, isn't he? There's a lot of dust and fur around there, mate. I could just got a dog, haven't I? Yeah. Also, by the way, what do you think of Lee's new hairdo? He's just, he's just had his bumps. I, I said, can you do me the plumber parts? <laughs> One of the things that we're doing today, let's have a look at this job now. Come on, without further ado. Because some people are actually here because they want to know how to boost their heating system and their hot water without um, running dry. So here we go. We've got a tank here. In this section here, this is where our water is heated up, okay? But there has to be a feed into this section and that is where this top bit comes in. So just see this is like a basic F&E tank. It's got a little ball valve in there. So as we open up a tap and water starts to come out, out of the taps, the ball valve drops and we start topping up this tank up here with cold water from the mains. At the moment, when Lee opens up his hot tap, there's a dribble, literally a dribble comes out. I think, I think your missus said it's like an old man spitting. So what we need to do is improve that by popping a pump on there. <laughs> and here's the pump. So we've got a universal two bar single. Now, let me just describe it. So you've got universal and standard. Standard pumps rely on a really good flow to go through them to initiate a little switch inside the pump to actually turn the pump on. If there's not enough flow, the pump won't ever cut in. So what universal pumps do is they almost allow a little build up of pressure on the back of the pump when you shut the tap off. So when you open up the tap again, that little jet of pressure coming through flips the switch and initiates the pump. And they build this little bit of pressure up in this little expansion vessel in here. That's the very basic way of how they work. This is a single impeller one, which means we're only pumping on one side because we're only gonna be pressurizing the hot because naughtily this house has got vented hot on one side and mains cold pressure on the other. I mean, really Really what you'd usually do is put an unvented cylinder in here, but you know, Lee doesn't get paid enough. Oh, baby. Oh, Jordan, please. <laughs> By the way, that's Eli there. <laughs> Eli's my masseuse. 
So this is a Stuart Turner pump that we've got here. Uh, not sponsored by Stuart Turner or anything like that. Usually you get flexies both in 22 mil on these, but you can get them in 15. Um, we're doing this in 22 mil because our feed pipe coming down here is already in 22 mil. So we're gonna pop that in and pipe it up. But we're also gonna fit this lovely little contrapsi on here. <laughs> this is a float switch, and this is why Lee is reading the instructions at the moment. Are you all right with the instructions, mate, on the float switch? Yeah, it's just like a light switch, isn't it? Pretty much, mate, but with water involved. I'll just do the electric, you do the water. Okay. By the way, Lee has already bought me a sausage roll and supplied me with coffee, which is very, very nice. Thank you very much, Lee. Thanks, mate. If only all customers did that. Do you notice how upset Lee is about the fact that his lizard's dead? Apparently, when we were last here, the lizard was lethargic, a lethargic lizard. And um, Did you feed it some plumbers, mate? <laughs> no. A bit of flux. Um, I think maybe getting it out of its, like cage I guess what it is when he showed it to me maybe that was just too much stress for it let me draw on here what's going on so we've got our live in okay now usually you just run your live over to your pump okay like that and everything's okay but what we're gonna do is not do that oh look it's me. <laughs> it's point me so we're gonna run up to a little switch that is effectively gonna be moved up and down by the float in there when the water levels high that's like that, and that's now allowing electricity to go in and out of it off to our pump. But then as we start using more and more water, and we think, oh, we don't want to run that pump dry, that's going to go down because this is a float, isn't it? So as the water level goes down, the float will go down, and that will cut off the electric supply to the pump. I'm not really 100% sure how this is going to work, so stick with me. Let's get on with the job, and remember to just be like happy people. Hit the sub. They probably haven't hit the sub yet, have they? They've watched this far and they've still not mm. hit it. Head over to Artisan Electrics. Head over to Artisan Electrics and hit the sub there as well if you want. Oh. All right, Jordan, I'll be tracking that. 10 pound per sub, bruv, as usual, you know. Lockie, get out of here. Lockie, what's this? What's this, a box? Get it. No, it doesn't like that. See, he was like, I was brought over in a box. Look, if my dog dies <laughs> after next week, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. say it's- Be another animal <laughs> dead. <laughs> I like chucking boxes down the stairs, is that all right? Yeah, go for it. As long as you put it in the recycling after. <laughs> I'm really going to annoy your missus. <laughs> One thing, right, Emily doesn't understand is you don't ever have enough wood in life. Okay, I've got a wood burner. I was driving to the studio, I haven't finished a job yesterday. There was a lot of wood by the road. I said to her, I'm going to get this wood. She's like, nah, there ain't enough room in the wood store. I said, There's, you always need more wood. So currently, <laughs> got a few bits of wood in the back of the van. Have you got wood? Look at that. Yeah, the van's a right old state, isn't it? Still not taking it seriously, am I? Anyway, let's get some tools in. Do you think we should make him a little cross for his animal that died? He's got no eyebrows, mate. Lizards don't have eyebrows, which means they can't, they haven't got any, you know, personality. You got no eyebrows, you got no personality. <laughs> gonna need that, we're gonna need that. We're gonna need the pipe benders. You know where he's going at the moment in that car? He's going, to his house so he can go on the Amazon store and buy some tools and so he can do some bicycle curls. Oh yeah, also, I want to convince Lee of something today. I don't know how I'm going to do this with a straight face, but I'm going to try and convince Lee that there's a new regulation whereby you have to wear like well, this when you do soldering. I didn't get this at a stag do in Krakow a couple of weeks ago. Here we go, let's have a go. So another thing Lee's done, he's added on another little job. So he's got me doing the vanity unit second fix while I'm here, which is no big deal, I guess. But um, while I'm doing that, we'll get Lee to do the wiring up and we can talk about that as well. So you're gonna get a little bit of everything today. A little bit of electrics, a little bit of plumbing, and uh, a little bit of this. I think the videos would be better if it's like this, actually, because people generally think that I'm very ugly. Sorry mate, I've got to wear this now. I've got to do, honestly, it's a new reg. You've got a solder with like um, face thermal protection. That's a good idea. Right, okay. Um, right, so the first thing we need to do is turn off the hot water. Now, there is a valve on here that I've already turned off, a gate valve. Gate valves are just a bit of a nightmare. Always be wary of them because they do tend to seize up. So when you shut them, give them a good old nip, but don't go mental because you might not ever get them apart again. And then you've got more problems on your hand. Uh, the other thing we could do is turn off the mains water supply. Now I would expect there to have been a valve for that here, uh, but there isn't. Try and lay them in roughly the same place. Not that I'm even gonna attempt to actually put these back in. 
we're going to do the old trick, aren't we? We're going to make we're going to make what we are going to put them back in. And go, oh, 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 they don't quite go back in, Lee. Can you do it? And he'll go, oh, yeah, that's all right, mate. And then we'll be like, oh. <laughs> so we've got an in and an out. There's an arrow on here. What do you think that means? Oh yeah, that's the outlet. So we've got an in here and an out there. Nicely protected. Remember as well with your rubbers on these, just remember that they should be in there. Sometimes they can't, they can come out, but always make sure that they're there before you do any work, just to make sure you don't have any massive problems. Good idea as well, while the pump is out, is just to get these in and just nip them up now. Because they're on rubbers, guess what? You don't have to tighten them up like mad. There's no need to do that. We don't want to fill this bottom bit up by having the pump sat right in the middle of it. So we're going to try and sort of pop it around the side there, I think. That might not happen. Believe me, if I get even slightly annoyed with the position of it there, I'm going to put it in the middle. Don't care, it's not my house. Right, just always want to make sure. So our outlet, <laughs> this is annoying. Our outlet's going to go like that and down and then this is gonna go in there like that. So we're gonna have to put a little bit of a set on this. Got a little question for you. Okay, everybody, like a bit of multiple choice. With this being like this, what problem do we have now? Is it A, our pipe work that we wanna cut into is above the valve and therefore live? Is it B, the fact that the two flexes are at different heights, it makes it some sort of issue? Or is it C, the fact that I haven't been offered a coffee for the last 35 minutes? If you said A, hey, you were correct. So now we've got to find a way of getting all this lot drained out, which won't be that hard, because what I'm gonna do is pretty much turn the cold water feed off to it and open all the hot taps. Mm. Right, so we're just getting all the hot water out. Well, we're getting all the cold water out. I need a towel. Misses. Another little bit of learning for you. So let's, let's have a look at what this tank is here. So we've got effectively two tanks in one. Here's where we feed cold water in and the cold water just stays in this bit here, okay? And then we've got hot feed off out to the taps like that. But then we've got just a little loop that goes down here into the bottom here that feeds cold water from here into this hot tank. This is an indirect hot tank. So these two pipes here actually come from a coil from the boiler. And as you guys all know, because I've told you a million times, that water in the coil does not mix with the water in the tank. You don't wash in boiler water. So when we open up a tap, we have water come down here, flows through here, goes out of this outlet here, and then off to the taps. And that has to be topped up by this tank here. So remember what we're doing, we're gonna pop in a pump here effectively now, which means the water flow out of here is gonna be even more, even more. There's gonna be more water coming down from the cold water tank here. So that's why we need to have a small float switch at the top with a little float that will cut off the power supply to this pump should this water level get too low, okay? Like I said, I've never done this before, and I, I am excited about it. I laid in bed last night awake thinking about it. Emily was like, why are you laying there with your eyes open? I was like, I'm thinking about pressurizing hot water tanks. Right, so the water's stopped now. So this level here has got down to there, therefore it's not feeding any water into this. This tank's actually still full of water, but we aren't feeding the water down from the top part of the tank into the bottom. Therefore this pipe is not having any water coming out of it now. There's probably a very small dribble, which will be a bit annoying when it comes to soldering later on, but nevertheless, it should be doable. So let's get cutting. So what I've done is I've just run a five core flex up the cupboard to the float switch. So I'm just wiring it outside to make it easier. So cheers, cheers mate. So basically I've taken a neutral, a live in, that'll go through the switch, live out and then an earth. And then I'll take this into the fuse spur and the cable from the motor I'll take into the back box of the fuse spur as well and then I'll literally, my neutrals go together, my earths will go together, my live that goes from the load side of the spur will come up here, and then this switched live will come down and connect to the live that goes to the motor. So I thought I'd only need two 22mm elbows, but having a look at it, we're gonna have to do a little bit more. So, 
we are going to cut into this pipe here so our down pipe you saw earlier on cut it out like that it's going to keep dripping a little bit what we're going to have to do here with this piece that is going to effectively have to just do that okay and then that bit's done and then we'll cut this up here put a straight coupling in and just set over to here using the bending methods that i've taught you in many plumbing parts for the young finger path huh? do you wear a bit of barber Oh, oh yeah, the ja yeah, I've got a ja rain jacket. That's electric, isn't it, boy? Yeah. Do you drive a Tesla? Got a motorbike? Design a dog? Why would you have to do that? Look, Jimmy's tricking everyone driving around in his battered VW. <laughs> really, he's got stacks. <laughs> if only. One thing I would not do when soldering this, I'd get all this in now and try to solder it. If you can't do it with the pump out of the way then protect the pump especially the plastic because the flux of solder can really damage that plastic so that's going to go on like that there should be a tiny little connector on there and look at that water lego in the words of super hands isn't it super hands said that on peep show you watch peep show max no. he doesn't watch peep show now i've got to strip all of it down again because it all needs to get fluxed Now we sold her. Ooh. So you might wonder where I got that balaclava from. It was from my mate Stag Do. We went to Poland, my mate Dane. If any of you have been to install a show, you'd have met Dane in the past. Um, I was his best man and I organised for us to go to a lovely little bit of go-karting, but they let me do go-karting topless. But I uh, obviously came away with the balaclava in my pocket, didn't nick it, it was just an accident. And at three in the morning, it ended up on this girl's head in a karaoke bar. Very soon after that, I nearly got my head chopped off by a fan because I was on someone's shoulders. Dangerous things, stag dude. Hey, we've got one in, hey! <laughs> now we just need to get another. We're gonna do a little set. Right, now we've got to do some soldering for the People's Republic of England. What? What? Now I've got to wet this because I need to clean the pipe. I feel funny. Don't know what's happened, but something weird. The space tank continuum was ruptured somehow. Uh, just need to get this wet. Moist. Chance of this leaking is 85% not leaking, yeah? Anyway, give it a bit of a brasso. Right, we're gonna put the water on. Let's see if there's a leak. <laughs> Come on, you always think like that, I'm a plumber. It's just how it is. Lee, can you go and turn the um, hot tap off downstairs, please, in your kitchen next to your girlfriend's jumper? Full valve is now nearly up, so we're nearly full. That's what that noise is, yeah, as it goes hissy, hiss, hiss as it fills up. Uh, and we've got no leaks, nada, nothing. Um, so we're ready to do the bit that I've never done before. Um, and I'm, I'm interested to see how this is gonna work. So first thing I wanna do is take this lid off. Cause everything, oh my God, this lid's soaked. Everything is gonna revolve around this lid because we need to fix our float to this lid. Always imagine that the arm of our ball valve is like that. And then we're gonna try to keep our float kind of here, I think. Cause I think if it's bouncing a lot, it might cut the pump in and out quite a bit, which might be a bit annoying. Why is there so many lumps on this thing? So if we cut that like there, down there, yeah? You agree with me here? And then what we'll do, we'll glue that onto there. We'll, we'll CT1 it on, cause there's no real fixing points apart from that. And also I know people are gonna say, you know, you're compromising the fact that we're cutting into the top of this here. You know, they do. Oh, just... I don't care. Follow Lee while he cuts this outside. Right, okay, so that's there now, yeah? 
Lovely. So this is gonna sit on top of our tank. So what we wanna do is have it, the float quite low down. So when the tank's full of water up to here, that's up like that, okay? And then when the tank comes down, it pulls on the arm and then turns the electrical supply off to the pump. We've just got the slight issue of getting this fitted to the top of this so it's nice and fixed, but also later on, outside of the video, I promise I'll cover this up a little bit so it's adherent to the regs. Wow, look at that. And these screws are the perfect size, demonstrated by the small amount of thread sticking out on the underside. There you go, hope no squirrels get in there. Right, so now this float will hang on here, like so, underneath. Let's see what we're getting somewhere here, aren't we? Nothing better than the smell of burning plastic. Can we test? Can we just like run the water out? Get an ohms meter on here, I just want to see Stop looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about, Lee. That annoying sound is continuity test going through the switch because at the moment this is full of water. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn the feed off here and we're gonna run a load of water out and just make sure that the float goes down and it cuts it off. The water level has gone down such that it has turned off the power supply to a pump, it's actually off now. So, we're gonna turn off the taps. Well, I just wanna see as well, while this is filling up, what it looks like when that's happening. Yeah, man, look at that. That's gonna slowly fill up. Jimmy's definitely not filling it up. <laughs> it's still not switched it. Always test what you're doing, so I had a good look in there, and after a while I noticed that the float's just doing this, yeah? Going up and down the string. Any of you seen the film Edward? Pull the string! Pull the string! Bella Lugosi. Anyway, that's why there's another one of these. It's got to go on there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that, can you? I was like, why is it not working? What the hell's going on here? And I burnt the end off, didn't I? It's just there. Oh. Get in there, boy! Right, we're gonna put that about there, I think. But they've made these a bit hard to get on. I mean, I, I know what they're trying to do, but I understand, but. Right, there we go, look, now it works properly. <laughs> right, we've done some testing. It might need a little bit of tweakage, but Lee, you know how to do that. I've shown you how he's read the instructions, unlike me. Lee's going to wire that up, I'm going to get on and do his vanity unit. While Lee's doing that, let's go to the van. I think we need to remember. Right, so obviously he's lost a dear creature, hasn't he? Dead lizard or dragon or whatever thing's called. I think it's just, should we just write a, like give him a sort of memento, piece of pipe or something with the name of it? Or should we give him one of those avocado plates that I've still got in the back of the van? Still got crumbs on it, but that'll be all right. Sorry for your loss. Nelly is at peace on a stick in heaven. It wasn't Nelly, that's his girlfriend. <laughs> Well, we'll have to cross it out, won't we? <laughs> Two M's. I mean, we've, the heart's there, isn't it? Sorry for your loss, Lemmy, Two M's, is at peace now. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Should we cross that out? I can't believe we put Nelly on there. No, that's got to stay. But what if she thinks we want her dead? We don't want her dead. We're only plumbers, we're not killers. I know, it's been a hard time, man. Has yeah, it got a lizard on it? No, it hasn't got a lizard on it. I, <laughs> I got it. I got its name wrong though, I called it your missus's name by accident. You can put it on, on the uh, plant if you want. Sorry mate. You've got to sign it, why haven't you signed it? Yes. Okay. Thank mate, what is on that? It's I've got like it's sausage cake. fat on it's it or cake. something. <laughs> Lemmy is at peace now. You have teeth in it. It looks like a crocodile mate. It's quite good actually. Are you done up there? It's done? 
Yeah. You, you finished the wiring? Yeah. Oh, well after that interlude, let's go and make sure that everything's working okay. Well, I'll tell you what guys, we have got some decent work going on in here. Look at that. All nice and neatly done. So, should be able to switch this on. And there shouldn't be any build of pressure at the moment because it's just sat there. But let's just put, bring some water over the top of that. We've got the water on up here. Let's turn it on and see what the water pressure's like now. So, moment of truth. Remember, it looked like this. Really slow, awful, like poor flow. Now look at it. <laughs> that is so much better. Now hopefully we should be able to run that. If I time this, if that can run solidly for five minutes without our float dropping down enough, then we know that the float is just a backup. It's just there to protect the pump, which costs four or 500 quid, yeah? yeah. We're trying to convince him, he's like, it's a waste of money spending 60 quid on the, on the float switch. By the way, I've listed the float switch on our Amazon store as well, all right? So I'm just giving that a five minute test now. That's pretty much the time it's gonna to take to fill bath up just on the hot water. Remember, we've got cold water mains on here as well. And if it can beat that and run perfectly fine, it should be okay. And the tests I've done already, the water level's dropping by about an inch overall. So the ball valve feed is keeping up really well with our pump. Boom, so there we go. After about three minutes of the first uh, time that we used it, it did cut out. The float went so low that it cut it out, but that's because we hadn't quite calibrated it. So, because uh, I looked in the lid and we still had about a good four or five inches of water in the bottom and we were that far off the outlet. So we gave it another inch as well. And literally it's run for like seven or eight minutes just then without turning off. And as you can hear, we've only just switched it off and it's already topped up and filled up again. Also, it's whole hot water system now. This used to be really slow. So we've got cold on here and now it's hot should be, look at that, really good as well. And look who's come to see it, little doggy. Hello. <laughs> He's gonna go mad and start biting him in a minute. Woo. Nice. Good job, Jimmy. Right, so I'm getting bitten by a dog. If you wanna learn how to do pipe bending like I did in this video, then you wanna click on this here. Okay, this is a great video that you're gonna learn how to do some fantastic pipe bending offsets and not make the mistakes that some people do in the world of plumbing. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe if you haven't already and hold tight. Goodbye.